Beloved of God, welcome to Breaking Open the Word, the Sunday edition of the God Minute. I'm Father Michael. Today, the church celebrates the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. And the gospel chosen for us today is a continuation from last week. It's taken from the 16th chapter of Matthew, verses 21 to 27. So let's just place ourselves in the presence of the Lord and open our hearts and our ears to hear him speak to his word to us. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A chauvinistic husband and his godly wife were preparing to have breakfast when the wife asked, Why do I always have to make the coffee? The husband answered, because you're the wife, that's your job. The wife replied, well, the Bible doesn't say. It's the woman's job to make the coffee. It's, it says instead that it's the man's job. Taken back by this, the husband demands to see where in the Bible it states that he should be the one to make the coffee. Well, it's right here, the godly woman replied. Hebrews. <laughs> oh, goodness. Today, the gospel passage that we have reminds us that we have competing values in our life. There are the values of the world and there are the values of our faith. The values of the world tell us that the more we have, the more we own, the more money we hoard, the happier and more secure we will be. In other words, Grab all the gusto. It's every man for himself or woman for herself. You are number one, and you come first before everything else. Do whatever it takes to succeed, even if that means deceiving your neighbor. Hmm. Well, the values of God or of our faith are quite different, aren't they? And actually a lot simpler. We've heard them often enough. You think by now we would be following them. Love God with your whole being and your neighbor as yourself. You see, to know that you love God with your whole being and your neighbor as yourself, and to understand this love when shared returns love back to you is the greatest value our faith offers. We know that it's true by Christ's own sacrifice on the cross of giving his life lovingly and completely so that we might have life abundantly. When we're confronted by this gospel passage today, we're awakened to the reality that what the world promises is not the things that are of value to us, but often are empty and shallow and pass quickly. Things of this world do not last. 
you don't believe me, just ask the many people who lost homes and land this year in floods and wildfires. You see, Jesus' disciples have grown up believing that the Messiah, he who is to come into the world, will be a mighty warrior who will destroy those who have treated the Hebrew people with such injustice and made them feel as though they are victims of this world. This has only been further emphasized even in modern times with the Holocaust and similar anti-Semitic actions. Jesus has been with his disciples for a good amount of time now, at least long enough for them to recognize he is the Messiah, as we heard from Peter last week. But it, it aggressive, but his aggressive response to Peter, get behind me, Satan, is a genuine re reaction of frustration. He wants to awaken in them the truth that as Messiah, he comes to change the world with love and compassion and truth, not hostility, not condemnation, not war. The Messiah of God is love. And so he goes on to let them know that he must suffer and die in order to bring about this change from hate to love, to take away the sins and bring salvation. Beloved, the values of God are everlasting. If we allow them to, they can satisfy the longings of our heart and provide a security that is without end because they promise peace and compassion and unity and love and a life with God forever. Wow, who else could promise us that? Jesus shows us that love lasts, love sustains, love empowers, love is eternal. If you don't believe me, then perhaps I've not been very effective in my preaching, let alone my lived example and my ability to express my love relationship with Jesus Christ and the church. Here's the challenge for us this week. If you're hearing this, you already know that you want to love the Lord and your neighbor in a way that is better and more effective in your life because you too believe that God's values are greater than the world's values. You want to progress in your faith, in your life journey in a way that is successful and filled with joy. You have experienced the conflict and the times you have chosen the world's values over God's values, and you know you've not been happy or satisfied. You know the pain that it's caused in your life. So this week, decide how you want to spend your love and grow in your experience of God's values. Maybe you spend an hour in adoration. Maybe you choose another day during the week to go to Mass. Maybe you pray the rosary on your way to work. Maybe this week you consistently pray for someone you're struggling with, not to change them, but so that you can better love them. Let's stop pointing the finger at everyone else and how they're failing or not like us, or let's just pray that we can love them, starting with ourselves right now in this moment. Put God first in all things, and I guarantee all the things you're worried about or angry over won't matter anymore. You will come to know the true values that are life-giving, and with such joy and peace in your life, you'll never look back. And isn't that what we want anyway? May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Now, before we conclude, I want to remind you that this is September Spirit Month here at the Godman. What does that mean? Well, let me tell you. You see, on September the 27th, the whole church celebrates the feast of St. Vincent de Paul. Now, as many of you know, he is our patron at the God Minute because the God Minute is a ministry of the Vincentian family. So, during the month, 
we will provide a night prayer for all of us to pray each night. And this prayer is based on the prayer called Transform Me, written by another Vincentian, St. John Gabriel Perbor. It's a beautiful, beautiful prayer, and I highly recommend it to all of you. Now, in addition, throughout the month, we'll get the opportunity to hear the vocation story from the vowed members of the Vincentian family. So our, our priests and our sisters. We will also be asking for the intercession of various Vincentian saints and blesseds each day to intercede for us before the Lord. Finally, as a supplement to our app blog, random places of Vincentian interest around the world, though mostly in France since he was based there, will be shown in quick video snippets. So I hope you'll like that and I hope you'll take advantage of it. You know, as a diocesan priest, I was blessed to be formed by the Vincentian seven of the nine years of my seminary formation. And I consider myself blessed to have been formed by the Vincentians. I also consider myself an honorary Vincentian because I've been so affected by the Vincentian love of the poor and the formation of the clergy. And as members of the Godmanet family, you too are honorary Vincentians. And I pray that throughout this September Spirit Month, we can all grow a little bit more in the values of our faith and the spirit and vision of St. Vincent de Paul. Beloved of God, in the meantime, take good care of yourself and one another. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.